Yes, welcome back. This is Business Today on Y254 channel. My name is Miriam Sava, and before we begin this show, Mike Tyson once said that everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Now the question we're asking you, as you plan and execute your business, does it have the ability to adopt if it gets punched in the face? You know, according to, to Ken BS, there are almost 17 million registered SME in Kenya with 98% of them contributing 25% of the country's GDP. You know, the SMEs employ at least 90% <coughs> while micro business employs at least 10 people in a business. So, are you planning a business? This is the discussion for you. And to help me discuss this, we have such amazing gentlemen on the show. Karibuni san. Yes, I just want you guys to introduce yourself. Because if I do, I will be doing an injustice to you. <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me uh, today. And I'm grateful that uh, we are gathered here so that we can be able to discuss uh, matters of business. Because to me, matter of business and especially with the youth, hmm. uh, it's something that is very, very key and very, very paramount when it comes to those people who are starting startup as uh, we'll be able to discuss today. Okay, sure. You haven't told us your name though. Oh, and um, <laughs> Andrew Shonko. Andrew Shonko. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. what did you do? Uh, I'm a business uh, youth leader and uh, mostly we normally do trainings and workshops for the youths, those who are starting their business. And uh, we are saying that it's all about my hustle, hustle yangu, riziki yangu. I can see it, it's on your t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hustle yangu, riziki yangu. Nice. Yeah. Yes, and the other one. Uh, good evening. Yeah. My name is Shia Maina. Okay. Um, I love the topic. Uh, Mike Franklin, one of the founders of UAC, once said that Failing to plan is planning to fail. <laughs> and that can be the main agenda why businesses fail. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. I have a company. It's called Yes Africa Solutions. Mm -hmm. And what we do, we just bring solutions to Africa. You mentioned that you're an entrepreneur. Let me just start with you. Yeah. I know you made goals at the beginning of the year. Uh -huh. You set some goals in your... Everyone laughing. I know you set some goals at True. the beginning of the year. Yeah. Have you com accomplished some or have you implemented some or you just forgot it by the second year of January? Second, second week, sorry, second week of the year. Uh, I believe I'm more intent in my planning. Mm. So 60% complete. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Mentor. To be honest, uh, we, I've really actually tried and to be able to see if they come to a reality. Mm. But when I say my ground bit me different. <laughs> the Kenyan proverb. The, the, Kenyan, the Kenyan, Kenyan proverb. proverb. Yeah. But it's always good when you set uh, something forward, you actually work hard towards it. Mm. And it maybe if, uh, you will not be able to achieve maybe uh, maybe that thing during that year you can be able actually to pick it mm -hmm. from there the following mm -hmm. year. Mm. Yeah. Well, you, you mentor youth. So I youth amekuja kwako. He's like, which is the easiest business field I can venture into? Which is the advice you can give them? I think right now, to be honest, we are living in very different times, mm -hmm. whereby technology is moving things so fast. Mm -hmm. And if you're not able to move with time, uh, time will actually tell, and uh, you will not actually make it to the other uh, to the other end. So for me right now, if you look at some times ago, you will, you will actually find whereby people who are doing business of selling goods were actually doing so well. But if you look right now, services are actually doing tremendous because in terms of capital that is needed for you to run a service is actually a bit lower. And with the presence of online business, business is actually making it so easy, especially for those who want to venture into the business, to be able to stay afloat and to be able to run their business. So for me, I can advise, if you're doing any business, try service and do it online. Okay. Yeah. You, you know, Shem, most of the youths usually say that, I can miss in a door. I don't have funding, mm -hmm. I don't have the capital to start up a business. Is funding a main issue or what can you advise them? 
Um, with you, with your experience. With my experience, yeah. funding is really not an issue unless you plan to do a huge capital investment. Mm. But for any business, you can start from wherever. Mm. My business, I started with 3,000 shillings only. I just set up our website only. Mm -hmm. And from that, I was able to get clients, I was able to get businesses, and I was able to solve problems. So it's really about you starting. It's not really about the money. It's about you. Are you ready to start? Are you willing to start? Mm -hmm. If you're willing, it's not even about the registration of the business. It's about you starting mm -hmm. trying to get a customer, trying to get an opportunity so that you can tap into it. Okay. You've mentioned service. Funding was not an issue. Yeah. So if I want to start up a, a service kind of business, I need a physical address as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can yeah. talk, can discuss. Yeah. You know, there are issues like licensing and so much that is involved in setting <laughs> up a physical address. Yeah, yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. Do you think, do you think uh, the government is putting up enough measures to, to protect the small enterprises as well as the micro businesses? Uh, first of all, I can say yes. Uh, because you need to license your business for it to be viable mm -hmm. for it maybe to people know that this person is doing this thing and especially with the era that you are into here by being conned so easily mm -hmm. so first of all you need to license your business but sometimes uh, if you look in terms of cost we are discussing about a youth who maybe have a, a capital of starting a business let's say for example ten thousand if maybe half of that money will go to licensing, that means that business will not be able to stay afloat for quite some time. So that is one challenge that the youths the youth are facing. They don't also know which avenues to follow. Like for example, you can get maybe someone uh, may, might think like, if I need a license, I can go maybe to a police station and mm -hmm. ask for a license. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll find when you go th maybe to the county offices, maybe the channels are not uh, the right way that you can be able to follow even with a country that we know ourselves so well in Kidogo. <laughs> so before you get that license, you find maybe you're frustrated mm -hmm. and maybe someone might even give up, give up before they even begin. Mm -hmm. And this uh, idea that you have, how do you make it a reality? Because everybody has an idea in this world. Everybody. Mm. Everybody has an idea. But the question is, as an entrepreneur, as a youth who is coming up with a, with a business, how do you make it a reality? And how will you keep that reality afloat the longest time possible? That will be the difference. Is it necessary for me to set up a physical address? If I'm providing, I'm doing a service kind of business? I believe uh, at this time, at this age, things are moving. The way the business of the 20th century used to operate is not the same way the business of the 21st century is operating. Mm -hmm. Right now, a physical address is not really a mandatory need right mm -hmm. now, unless you need to have a physical business. Mm -hmm. But um, there are a lot of businesses um, which really do not have physical addresses, and they are really working. So it's really a matter of understanding what kind of business you're doing. Because for a service industry, it's not so much uh, a need to have a physical address. Mm. You can just have a website, maybe an online presence, a Facebook page, uh, an Instagram page or something, and uh, do something with it. Mm. And uh, at the end of the day, I think what will come in to supplement in order maybe to mitigate you lacking a physical address is the kind of service you provide, the kind of work you do. Okay. Yeah. What are, now let us just jump into the main topic. I know guys have been waiting and excited about these topics. What are the, some, some of the mistakes the startups make? I think uh, if you look at statistics uh, and econometrics, uh, they will tell you like out of 10 startups, eight of them actually fail. Yeah. And as uh, my colleague said, Capital is not always the biggest challenge when it comes to business because you can actually take a loan, your friend or your parent, or you can actually uh, take your um, salary and start a business. Mm -hmm. But the question is, how will you be able to, to use that, uh, the, uh, that money to the next level? You'll find people when they start their business, they have not done something called need assessment. Do people need the product that I'm going to offer to them? Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, uh, I normally give this example. If you visit me at my place and find me selling eggs, and you see these eggs are doing so wonderful, <laughs> 
then you think I think I need to start this business at my place. You go and start that business not knowing that a few days down the line, no customers are there because they, you they, you you are not able to do a need assessment. Maybe the people in your place, all of them own chicken. They don't need eggs. They need maybe uh, layers some food to, to give to, to, to their chicken. Sure. So first of all, do a need assessment. Uh, do they actually need that product that they have? Then after that, maybe you can go into testing and so on and you'll be able to survive. <laughs> you wanted to add something? If I can add on okay. that, uh, what he said, factually, 42% of businesses fail in the first year. 70% fail by the third year. 80% fall mm. by the 80th year. Mm -hmm. So it's really about, you know, when most people begin a business, they have an idea. After they have an idea, they create a product. After creating a product, they sell the product. After they sell the product, people fail to buy. After people failing to buy, they run out of cash. Mm -hmm. After running out of cash, they're out of business. Why? Because they followed the idea, not the opportunity. <laughs> not where the problem is. And that's the huge challenge. Now, how can I overcome these mistakes? How can I not make these mistakes? I think uh, it's, it's just being able to do, a re uh, first of all, before you venture into something, d just consider the risk that will be associated with the business that you're going to venture into, mm. because risks will always be there. So it's for you to know how will I be able to deal with the risks that, that are associated with the business that I'm going to, to venture into. For example, with the presence of online right now, if you're thinking maybe to venture in maybe to a business that you want to start selling clothes and so on, you can actually buy a few, mm. do a test, post them online. If you post them and maybe in two weeks nobody has asked you about <laughs> if I can buy this dress, then that will be the wrong business to venture into. <laughs> so test mm. the waters, don't jump into the water. And also, also we have mentors who have already been in business. Go and sh share with the people that maybe you trust with your idea. Go and share with them. Tell them, I want to start uh, this business. Will this business be viable? Will it be sustainable? Or how long will, it, will I be able to continue doing it? Or maybe jump into it and then two, three days, you're out of business, you close. And actually g being able to get that capital took you a very long time, especially if you're a youth. Mm. Yeah. Okay, there are risks involved when starting a business. Shem, do you have an insurance for your business? Because you actually need an insurance before. <laughs> 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 Sorry for putting you on spot like that. Yeah. But yeah, his, how important is insurance really? Insurance, it's important mm. because insurance is a cover for uncertainty. We are, we are living in times where anything can happen. Anything can happen. Um, you can have uh, theft, maybe looting can happen. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are living in times where Terrorism is a threat, though so low right now. Mm. We are living in times where, um, let's say, a lot can happen. Mm -hmm. Maybe fire can happen mm -hmm. in your business premise. So insurance is important. But again, for the, a, a challenge to the insurance company, especially for business insurance. Business insurance really has to be for the business. At times, you find how they are packaged is really not so... <laughs> So it's not good. convenient it's for, not the, convenient for, for the, the business. business. Either way, you lose. Mm. Either way, you lose. For most, eh? for most, not all. Some are good. Mm. So my challenge to some insurance companies is to ensure that their insurance covers really make sense for us. <laughs> okay, we have had cases of some businesses setting aside at least five hundred, half a million. Mm -hmm. Let me say half a million mm -hmm. for fallback. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even do the, do the startups also need to do the same? Uh, I think one, yes, you think you, you need to do uh, some money for, uh, for f in case you fall down, at mm -hmm. least you can be able to rise again and move on. Mm -hmm. And that is why as we begin, I, I, I say like, if you have a capital, let's say for example, of, of 50,000, and maybe you want to buy stock, do you go and buy stock of 50,000 <laughs> in the first day? <laughs> yeah, you yeah. can actually decide like, okay, I have a ready market that is already there. Mm. Why don't I uh, at least buy maybe a st do a stock of maybe like 20,000, uh, 20,000, and then maybe you, c you can come and in case it doesn't work or in case maybe of case that we are talking about insurance or maybe you don't have an insurance, mm. fire mm. happens or maybe some uh, they are stolen. You don't 
close business and, and go home and then and then maybe by the way you start saying like the devil was on your side and so on. No. At least have a fallback. Have have a, a plan that maybe you can fall into in case things don't work. Or maybe if this business doesn't doesn't work, you can actually be able to start another business. Okay. Mm. Maybe yeah. to add on that. Okay. Huh? Um a business is like an individual per se. We, me and you probably have a savings plan. So it's also more emphasized for a business to have also a fallback plan. Mm -hmm. A good business person, a good entrepreneur should have a fallback plan. Because in business there are cycles. There are times where the business will come up as a startup, sometimes it will grow, it will mature, and at times it will business will be bad. Mm -hmm. So for a business to be safe, it has to have a savings plan. Uh, what you call a, 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 a fallback plan or a risk plan, so that you have to in, you have to see to foresee that probably in the next two years business will be bad, mm -hmm. especially maybe for a service company, maybe let's say a, a wedding company, maybe so much weddings do not happen in January. So what happens? <laughs> <You're sure. laughs> and you have people to pay. You have hired people to play. So you have to really think about it and say, okay, so. When that time comes, what do I do? What do I do to my people? Mm. What do I do to my business premise? I have to pay for a rent. Maybe you have a lease agreement. So it is important to have a risk or a fallback plan, as you have put it. Okay. Okay. Final comments as we end up the show. Uh, Speak to that youth. Speak to that youth. So that just encourage them. And uh, you can give an advice as they plan to start their business. Okay. Uh, fearing to fail. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, fearing to fail, mm. it's uh, like you don't want to do it, but you have to do it. Mm. So do it and learn as you continue. Venture into it and make it a way in which you will learn as you continue moving. Don't fear and say like, hey, everybody who have been in this business have always failed, have always failed. Actually, learn from their mistake and grow from what they have actually failed from it. So for the youth who is out there and, and uh, maybe they are saying that the business is bad and things are not working, do not fear. Venture into that business. Be able to find ways of maneuvering through it because challenges will be there each and every day, but it will depend with how you'll be able to dive inside. Uh, uh, that will be a very big determinant in deciding if you'll be able to make it the other side of, side of the river or will not make it. Okay. So do not fear going for it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Andrew. Yes, sure. Um, For me, I will say this. If you have an idea, just start. Just start. It doesn't matter how much capital you have, how much knowledge you have. Just begin just begin and trust yourselves and as you trust yourself ensure that you meet solutions you make solutions to problems which are existing don't imagine that there is a problem where there is no problem and as you do that do that focus on three things people products and profit <laughs> people product and profit thank you so much chairman andrew for making time to join me on y254 business news yes one thing i've learned today is fallback plan is important. Fallback plan, Ekaile Capital Kando, fallback plan is very important. Well, that marks the end of our show here on Y254. Until next time, that is next Tuesday, same time, same place. My name is Miriam Masava. Don't go anywhere because the buzz is up next. But first, I want to thank Brian, our editor, Timo, our director, and the rest of the crew who made this production a success. God bless you. Good night.